Hello, Miss Lee. Hello, guys. Hello, cool cat. Milo. Milo is here today. I wonder if we'll hear Milo today. No hellos? Except Lay. Lay is the only one that likes me today. Huh. Cool cat, what are you doing? Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, there's Foggy Lily. Way down, hiding behind the desk. <laughs> oh, it's hard to see you with the foggy camera and then the bright light behind you. It looks like you're an angel in the clouds. <laughs> Are you feeling better? Feeling better? Well, your sister said that you were not a happy girl today. Really? Well, you were sitting right next to her when I asked. She wears earphones. Oh, that's why you couldn't hear me every time I said hello. Hello, Lily. Lily, hello. <laughs> because she's wearing earphones. Yeah. Oh, now I understand. Oh, we have an angel and a ghost. Someone hiding in the dark. A candlelight ghost with a white curtain behind her. Oh, my God. Hello, Mimi, Mimi Milo. Wah, bye, Mimi Milo. <laughs> oh, now, how are you today? We still have a microphone problem, don't we? Oh, Mimi. Wait for me a bit. Wait for you a bit. Oh, my God, look at all those books. I wonder if she actually read all those books. Hmm. I'll have to ask her. All right. We are on lesson two of Bubbles. <laughs> I love that name. Bubbles. You have your book now? Yes. Yeah. All right. So today, today we're going to go traveling around. Yeah. We're going to go to Spain and visit a city called Barcelona. Talk about some of the interesting things in Barcelona, Spain. It's a place I would very much like to visit. And I found an interesting fact about Barcelona, too. It is believed by many. I guess there's no proof because there is some there is dispute on this. But um, apparently the city was the name was built. Barcelona was built. Named, not built, but named by Hannibal. Barca's father, Barca, Bar, uh, Barcelona. It makes sense. The, the name is in there. Um, Hannibal Barca. Do you know who Hannibal Barca is? His time was more than 2,000 years ago. I can't remember if it was 200s BC or AD. He was one of the, he's a famous, famous, famous leader, general ruler back in that time in the early t years, a recorded time, 247 Born 247 BC. His father before that was a general for the Carthaginians. The Carthaginians were the superpower before the Romans. And they controlled all the Mediterranean area. And that's where they had, they had like three, almost like a world war then. And it was the Romans who became a big superpower. And they went to war against Carthage. Uh, if I had a map and everything, I'd show you, but I just want to get the basis down because that, that's a whole lesson by itself. That's many lessons to talk about those. So Romans were based in Italy, in Rome, and Carthage was based in Tunisia, which is in northern Africa um, on the Mediterranean Sea. But they're very, very close to each other. But during those wars, of course, there is amazing history. Um, Hannibal Lecter. Uh, Hannibal Lecter, <laughs> that's a character. Hannibal Barca, um, after his father died as a general leading the armies fighting the Romans, he became a young, young man general. And he led, um, you might have heard this story. He led an army from northern Africa all the way to Spain with elephants. And he went all the way up over Spain and through France. And he crossed the mountains, the French Alps, the mountains with elephants and then entered into northern Italy, which was Roman territory. 
And he was there for like 10 years with his army. Um, and he fought many, many of the generals and many of the armies. And, and he won, I think, and he won just about every, he won it. He must have won everyone because 10 years later, he actually escaped stealing some boats and going back to, to uh, Carthage before the final war. Um, and he, he's legendary. Uh, I've watched documentaries on him several times, and it just blows my mind what this guy did. He was so intelligent in, in his time. And he was in Rome fighting Roman armies for 10 years, and he kept winning all the time. They couldn't stop him. Um, they were all scared of him. And the people would help him, too, because they wanted to be freed. There's a, there's a long, 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 long story about it. And why do I talk about Hannibal, famous, famous Hannibal the warrior? Uh, eventually his story, eventually he went back to Carthage. He had another war against the a son of one of the generals he killed. Uh, and he lost that war in Carthage. Uh, and then he, he left and then went on his own somewhere after Carthage was destroyed. But I say this because we're talking about Barcelona today. And Barcelona is a city that is thousands of years old. It has a lot of history. It was ruled by the Muslims. It was ruled by the, the, the Carthage. It was ruled by the Romans. It was ruled by the Spanish. It was, you know, it was ruled by many, 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 many different empires in history. But the name Barcelona, some believe, some historians believe that it was his father. And his father's name was Ham Hamilcar. I may be pronouncing that wrong. Hamilcar Barca. And Barca. B A R C A, if you do, put it at the beginning and the end, bar, solo, na, right? It makes sense. And that was his time that he would have lived there and, and, and been a big influence at that time, establishing that city, that area. So it's very possible that he started a lot of Barcelona, a lot of history over there. The history is phenomenal. It's just, I, I would love to spend time there. I, I really want to do it before I get too old. So, yeah. Very, very interesting stories. I hope I didn't bore you too much. <laughs> I love history. Okay. So let's get started then. As I said, we're going to, the topic today is going to be about the city of Barcelona, right? It's kind of bar and C and A. You take alone out and it's Barca. Funny, funny. Where is Barcelona? Barcelona is in Spain. In Spain, yeah. It's in the northeast coast on the Mediterranean Sea. They got a big beach and everything there now. All right. So there we go. Let's start. Oh, first, how was your party last Saturday night, Mimi Milo? It's not a party. My family just hang out. Oh, uh, not a party. It was just you and your family went out. You got to, um, when I do your test, you'll see. It's so hard to understand what you're saying. Okay, let's get our vocab challenge started here. Realize. Ah, ah, she didn't realize. Yeah, that sounds right to me. And yes, check my verb list here, my word list here, and that is correct. It is realize. She didn't realize the danger she was in walking down. It looks like a... One of those underground, under the road kind of walkways or something. That's what it kind of looks like. Looks like there's stairs up here. Yeah. Hey, you got to be careful at nighttime when you're walking around in the streets. It's just not good. He realized something about his work. Got excited about something to understand a situation sometimes suddenly. Oh, I just realized I've got more money. Ah! <laughs> realize, realize. Mimi Milo. Yeah. Hmm. It sounded like you said real life. <laughs> Lily, real lies. Real lies. Yeah. yeah. All right. What do you call it when you're in the air? Not taking off, not landing, but the part of when you're traveling through the air. You are in or on the journey in the air is called what? Oh, right there. A journey in the aircraft. <laughs> Five, four, Five. three. Mimi? Five. I think you're saying it right again. Five. 
flying. No, well, that's the verb. They're flying. But they are on a mm, to Hawaii. What's the noun? They're attending. Attending is working on the plane. Flight attendant. The person. I forget what Flight. noun is that. Maybe Milo? Flight. Yeah, flight. They're on a flight. That's what we call it. I'm on a flight to New York. Flight. Once you actually take off, you hit the air. That journey, that part of the journey is called the flight. Now, of course, the verb is to fly. Yeah, flight. Oh, I'd love to go on a, a jet plane like that, spinning around, going so fast like that. That would be so cool. What are those things? Specifically, a bunch of them. All of it that you bring with you. You got to check in your, mm, I got to pick up your, mm, like it's all your bags, your suitcases. Package. Well, a package is usually something you pack up and you mail it. You send it by courier or something. This is what you travel with, all your possessions that you need. Luggage. Yeah, luggage is what we call it, right? Because you could have one carry-on bag, one suitcase, one bag. Um, but all of it together, if you have three or four, we're going to call that our luggage. Do you have any luggage to check in? Right? No, I just have my carry bag. I don't need any help. But if I have luggage, I have to check it in, right? Because there's a lot of things. Yeah, luggage. Luggage. Maybe Milo? Luggage. Gidge. Idge. Luggage. Luggage. Lily. Luggage. Luggage. Yeah. Another word for a lineup. Yeah. One of the strangest words in English, in my opinion. All right. A row is side by side, but if you're in a line, there's another Hello. word for that. What is it, Lily? Column. Cool? Column. Column, no. Cool. Mimi? Cool. Yeah, that's right. Q. It's a Q. Get in Q. Get in line. Yeah. It's really strange how they spell that. I don't know. The, I, I should really check what the origins of that word is. It must come from, I don't know if it's French or if it comes from the French side or the Latin side or the Germanic side or the Greek side. I have no idea where that word came from. It's funny how all of that is just pronounced the letter Q. <laughs> and there's also another one like this Q. Do you know what that Q is? C-U-E? That's a cue to play billiards, to play pool. You know that long stick you use to hit the ball? That's a cue, cue tip, cue ball, cue stick. Um, yeah, cue. That's how we call that one. A thing said or done that serves as a signal to an actor. Oh, on cue too. Like to, it's also used. And when you're performing or enter to begin their speech or performance, given a cue to or for. Curious. Okay, that's a verb as well. It can also mean to take action. And this cue, of course, is a lineup. Right. Okay. So the other one is called the pool cue. A pool cue is that long stick. I'll probably put a picture in the video here so you can see it. It's called a pool cue, and the pool cue is that long stick we use to, to play billiards with. We call it pool. Um, some people call it billiards. I guess that's more the, the more formal or sophisticated. Um, there's another fancy game called snooker, and it's more about colors and stuff, different set of rules. But that's a really good game, too. I enjoy playing that. Same as the lineup. 3-1. All right, let's go to the next one. It's easy. So easy. What are those things? 
Really? A what? A sign. That's it. It's just a sign. I don't know why I have sign in here. It must have something to do with. Does it sign your name or a sign on the wall or a sign pole? Why do I have sign in this? This, 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 this. Oh, it's right there. Now it's some of the words that are in our vocab for our reading today. Okay. It's just a sign. Danger sign. Open sign. A warning sign. A notice giving information, direction, or warning, etc. Could be for anything. Mm, easy, easy sign. Don't worry. The words will get harder. I promise. <laughs> Now we're going to talk about these buildings here. Barcelona? Yeah. That's Lily, yeah? Yeah. Lily, 4-2. Yes, there's Spain at nighttime. You can see it with all its beautiful lights. Barcelona is up on the northeast side facing the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah. So we're going to talk about this church here. What do they call it? It was a, um, it's a cathedral. Oh. It's a... Oh, I'll have to find the word and put it on the video. Can't remember. Barcelona. Too easy. Now, these ones you're not going to know, I don't think. Because in the reading, you know, we're basically going to take, we're going to be talking to a tour guide. And we're going to be talking about the different places to visit, the famous attractions. Um, and Spain and Barcelona are very well known for some of the uh, artistic people, not autistic, artistic, right? Uh, I think Picasso and, and uh, Dali, all these famous painters and creators, um, designers and architects. Um, a lot of them come from Spain. A lot of them come Maybe from Spain. Got his extra dinary designs. Yeah. Uh, what was the first one? It starts with a G. What is it? Gaudis. Gaudis, yeah. This is, uh, no, this is not Gaudis. This one is Guell, another famous, he was an architect, I believe. Privatized park system composed of gardens and architectural elements located in the Camille Hill in Barcelona. So Guell, and I'm not sure if they're the right pronunciation, this place is all made with all these tiny little ceramics, and he designed everything, like the walkways. They even have this creature, like a dragon dog or something, fiction. And as far as I know, this is all made by hand. Like, it's all, it's, it's, I've, I've never been there, and I can't get a lot of really good pictures. But if you have Google right now, and, and you go to Google, um, you'll, you'll see so many more amazing pictures, of course. Okay, so that is the guy, Usabi, Usabi, I really don't know how to pronounce his name, Guel, a Spanish entrepreneur. The first count of Guel was a Spanish entrepreneur who profited greatly from the industrial revolution of Catalonia, the area, in the late 19th century. So late, eight, late 19th century. So that's the late 1800s. So we're going back like 130, 140, 150 years ago. And he's also responsible for, I don't know, there's Go Godi is another guy here too, who designed many of the buildings. Spent when you go to Barcelona, when you look at the buildings, the designs, and the way they made these things, it's really historical. It's really an, an architectural marvel. It's really quite amazing. Um, as you'll see some pictures here. But again, it'd be really handy. You know, these interest classes would be really good if you had two systems where you can do the class and you can also Google at the same time because I can't use a lot of the stuff on Google because I don't have the copyrights for it. Uh, I can only use the licensed material I have, and these are the only pictures I could get. But you'll notice behind this, this head, this dragon-like, dog-like head, which I don't see any information on him yet, but we might find out. Look at the buildings behind it, how the balconies are all designed. It, it's very unique, very unique. So I'm not going to give a point on that one. I'm not going to give a point on this one either. See how these buildings are designed, how they're all rounded and stoned. And it, the designs are so different. Very unusual. 
and and then look at the balconies like the, even the even the railings around the balconies that they have here they're like statues i wish i had a close again you have to look at we'd have to look at google to get better pictures it's all i could use but it's like carvings of statues and this is the railing of horses and uh, soldiers and what, what gaudi okay gaudi so just so you know the guy we're talking about here is gaudi he was an architect famous architect casa mila like this building here for example this one down here i mean uh designed by architect antoni 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 gaudi an accomplished uh, commissioned by Pyramia and Rosimum. The name Casa Mila comes from the fact that it was a new home of the Mila family. That was a home. Oh my God. The couple occupied the main floor and rented out. Oh, okay. So they owned the first floor and then they rented out the apartments up, up top. Is anyone looking at Google as well? Or am I the only one looking at these images? Maybe you're the only one. <laughs> I'm the only one, huh? Yeah, it looks like there's horses in them. and Wow. It's um, pretty remarkable. So again, you don't see that every day. It's a very s specific design. And he's responsible for many of the old buildings in Barcelona. Now, this look at this building. Look at this. It's got Jesus here carrying the cross. It's got all the statues at the door. Look at all the engraved. This is all made by hand. But it took years and years. I can't remember how many years. They started building it. The, guy, the Gaudi had already died before they even finished it. But I mean, statues everywhere, hand carvings everywhere. It's just, it's just phenomenal, the detail. And if you were to see inside, it's, it's a big church. It's huge. It's just, you can't believe it unless you uh until you actually go see it yourself i guess that's what they say absolutely amazing architecture if you ever get a chance to travel through europe you should do it because you'll learn a lot now we even had to take some pictures from uh wikipedia because i couldn't get any other videos this is a very famous museum of an artist of course he's painted oh, all these walls museum? who is the artist and this museum he built with all the eggs on the roof. <laughs> it was a very, very different creative type of artist. If you look at his paintings, it's like you have these elephants with long, long horse legs. And you have all these crazy, crazy images. And it's just out of this world, some of the paintings he came up with. But this is his personal museum. Anybody know who the one of the famous one of the famous artist spanish artist was this one is dali this is the dali theater museum another famous place to salvadori or salvadora how did they say his name dali let's see here ah there he is okay salvador dali he's the one that had the long twisty mustache he went to america too and he was big on the fashion scene for clothes designs. He was just incredible. If you, if you Google Dali again, I, again, I can't, his pictures are not, I don't have the rights to show them on our YouTube channel. Um, but you look at his paintings and you'll never forget who Dali, who Dali was and the kind of work he, he created. It's just out of this world. <laughs> Well, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess we're not going to guess that one. Right. Now, this is not costume and it is not custom like it is a custom, um, but not like when you go to the airport and you have to show your passport and your all that kind of stuff, your papers, your visa. That's customs to go through to another country. But this is like tradition and culture. Um. It's kind of hard. I, I have a difficult time understanding myself. I, ha I have a difficult time understanding the differences between rituals. Rituals is kind of something you practice before 
uh, a tradition. You know, we have a ritual of doing something before weddings or something like that. And then you have the traditions, of course, um, the traditional dress and traditional Tet party customs. Again, it says here, right? Custom, a tradition and widely accepted way of having or doing something that is specific to a particular society, place, or time. Well, that to me also sounds like a ritual. Uh, customs, ritual, culture. Yeah, those four are very hard to, uh, to explain the differences between them. Uh, and in India here, you can see they do the, they call, I believe it's called a henna, henna, hina, where they do all the artwork on uh, their hands and stuff when they're, especially before a wedding. That's very popular or very common. That's a custom there. I believe this is in Bali or a, a, a customary ritual or dance that they do for some reason. That's a big fire. A very, 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 very big fire. Hmm. We call it a bonfire. All right. Let's not mess this one up. The next one. A famous traditional street food from Spain and especially Barcelona, from what I know. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing this is this similar dishes are very popular in many countries like this. You know, they remind me of egg rolls. We roll up noodles, or not noodles, but different vegetables and herbs and spices, and you could put meats in it or fish, shrimp, different things. So it's, I don't think it's something that we haven't quite seen before, but it, I, I was looking at, at some of the popular foods there, and these are called, any idea? Croquettes. And there was three or four... Um, I think it was this class. We were talking about different street foods in India and Mexico and Thailand. I think we've had a lesson like that before. And remember one that was down in Central America, Central America, Mexico called pa Paelo, pa Paella, I think it was. Um, that's also a very popular Spanish dish. So that's probably exactly why it's popular in South America, because it was a Spanish colony before. Pa paella, paello. So what would you call it if we visited Spain and went to Barcelona? We would be traveling what? A board. Again? A board. A board means all aboard. Get on the boat. Get on the train. Close. <laughs> but not a board. The R is earlier in the word. Boarding pass. Oh, boarding pass is the ticket you need to get on something you got the right letters lily you just have the wrong order all aboard the r is at the end this one the r is in the front traveling studying in a foreign country boarding pass. no it's not boarding pass five four three two one Aboard means get on. This is abroad. <laughs> but this is this is interest 22. No, I'm not gonna give you the point for that one. Then I gave you a chance to I gave you a chance to, 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 to figure it out, but you didn't get it. So no no. If this was interest 12, I'd give you the point. But I'm not gonna give it to you for in interest 22. Have to be stricter. Abroad. All aboard to travel abroad. All right. Get on the ship so we can travel to another country to go abroad. When you travel into someone else or another country, someone else's country, you are abroad, meaning you are out of your home country. Lily, abroad. Abroad. Lily, abroad. Abroad. Yeah. Did you say it, Mimi, or was that Lily that said it twice? Okay. I said it twice. You said it twice, yeah. Milo, abroad. Abroad. Yeah, with a little D at the end. Okay. Okay, so this one's similar, but you're not going to go into another country. 
You're just going to leave the land and you're going to work on a sea or an ocean. See, let's say you're Vietnamese, which you are, and you go work in Canada or America. You're going to go work abroad in another country. But let's say you're going to go work on a ship or you're going to go work on an oil tanker or an oil drill operation like this, a platform, I guess they call it away from or at a distance from the coast. Now, you're living out here on the water. So you are now working where? <laughs> and it means off land. Would you like to work on a boat or a big tower like that? Platform like that? Drilling oil? That would be rough. I'd, I have worked away from home in camps and I, I have to say that I do not did not enjoy it because you have to have you have to live with other workers you have to share rooms share bathrooms you all have to eat in a big canteen area um, I enjoyed the work I did when I was working with uh, seismic companies that were contracts like through oil companies to find oil I did do some of that in my 20s but we lived in camps in the forests and in the mountains for like 30 straight days before we would have a break to go home. Um, so it's very similar because we would live in all these trailers and camps in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but I, I didn't like that part of the job. You know, I, I like having my own private home and kitchen and bathroom. And I did not like sharing it with a bunch of other workers. <laughs> not, not my favorite. But the job was awesome. That's for sure. Climbing and hiking, flying around in helicopters in the mountains. That was cool. All right. This word is working off. Offshore. Offshore. Yeah. Right. Because the shoreline, that's where the water and the land meet. Right. The coastline, the shore, seashore. And that's the line. So if you're offshore, it means you're working out in the water out in a gulf somewhere or a sea or a bay. You're not working on land. You're working offshore. That's why they call this offshore drilling. They're drilling for oil in the ground, but it's not on the mainland. It's out in the bay or the, the gulf or the something. Yeah. In the same way as someone or something. I'm sure we had this word a while ago, but I think you had a hard time then. So I decided we'd put it back in here. Yeah. Hmm? Similar. Single? Similar. Singular. Similar. We, similar. We have lots of things similar besides music. It's very close to similar, but no. That's exactly why I put it back in here again. I, it's a word that we use all the time. I almost used it in describing this. Look like? <laughs> Look like? No. No. In the same way or some as someone or something. Like? Um, like I have nothing like with my sister. <laughs> again, we have a hard time with this word. All right. It's the things that you and your friends both like it's the things that keep your friendship strong or your work environment strong or your ideas strong because they're similar to other people's you have something in right like if if you like k-pop and the girl in your class likes country music you like dancing she likes watching TV. You like walking in the park. She likes, yeah. Mimi Milo? Common. 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 Yeah. And she just likes to stay inside all the time. It's going to be hard for you guys to build a friendship because you don't have many things in common. You'll notice that most of your friends, the better friends for sure, you often like doing the same things. You often have similar interests. Therefore, you have things in common with each other. Um, you'll notice that when you're older and, and uh, you know, you want to have your own family. You know, you're going to have to, well, you're both girls, so you're both going to have to find husbands someday. 
well, when you're when you're an adult and you're at that stage, you're going to realize that part of finding the right man for you, you're going to want to find a man who has a lot in common with you. So you have lots to talk about and lots to share throughout life, right? You don't want to be you don't you don't want to have nothing in common because it's going to be very difficult to get along, right? So to have things in common, very important for friendships and relationships. Common. It's a really good word to know. You're going to hear it all the time. Just a simple adjective. Full of light, sunny. Bright. Yeah, bright lights, bright colors. Bright, bright sun. And yeah, it doesn't have to be just light. Like I say, it can be bright colors. There's another meaning for bright. Can you think of what it is? This like, one, I'll actually, I'll actually give you a bonus point if you can get this one. Like intelligent. Bright in intelligence. That is correct. That's going to be a bonus point. So it's going to be a four-four tie. Ooh. We're actually going to have a vocab challenge today. We haven't had one yet. <laughs> Bright, a very bright kid means very smart, very intelligent, quick. What do you think is making? If you look at this powder here, the yellow and the green, what's making it jump up and down and, and bounce around and dance like that? Where do you think that powder is? What, what's it on? That is something they took and they probably in your house and they laid it down. And then they put all, probably put some plastic on it, maybe to protect it. And then they put all the powder in there and they turned it on. And then boom, 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 boom. What do you think it is? Loud speaker. Yeah, it's a speaker. You can see the rings for the speaker. Yeah. Now, I hate these words in vocab because there's so many that are interchangeable. You could have amazing. You could have terrific. You could have unbelievable. You could have remarkable. <laughs> and here's another one. Very unusual, special, unexpected, or strange. The universe is beyond amazing. Building a castle on those rocks is just unbelievable, but more than unbelievable. The puppets, well, maybe the detail is beyond normal. Isn't that a, I mean, imagine building that castle, standing out here working on this, up on this cliff rock mountain kind of thing. Whew. It's like probably like a thousand years old. Well, maybe not a thousand years old, but <laughs> it's old. I wonder if anybody still lives there. That looks like the one Brem, the, the Romanian castle where they say Dracula came from. Count Dracula in Romania, Bram Stoker. <laughs> okay, I'll give you one last clue here before we move on to the next one. Um, the word is going to start with extra. Three, two. Extremely. Extremely. So close, but no. One. Extraction. No, no, no. <laughs> Extraction is to take something out. Yeah. Have you heard that one before? No, I haven't. No, huh? Um, it's really a word we use when something is beyond the ordinary, of course, extraordinary. Um, and it's pronounced a bit unusually. They take the A out and they go right into the ordinary. Extra, extraordinary. You know, it's extraordinary how that man survived this, these years on a desert, deserted island. It's not normal. It's not ordinary. It, it's, it's, it's just extra, beyond. Like the universe is extraordinary. I mean, every time you look at it, you learn something new. It, it's endless, endless, endless. You know, when you, this is what I understand, but when you, if you ever, if you ever have an opportunity to go to the countryside 
away from all the villages and the lights and the cities, there are some nights where you can look at the sky. Like in Canada, when you're outside in the wilderness and you look at the, st- you look at the sky like this at nighttime, you can see millions of stars and these lines and 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 uh you can often I, i've seen you see those you see how the there's these like bullets shooting through the sky you see those can you see those things shooting through the sky they're called shooting stars i've seen many when i was a kid looking in the star and then shooting star where I grew up, I was out in the countryside on the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so there's no pollution, you know, no pollution, no big cities, no, no lights around. You, you could go to areas where it's just so dark. So on a beautiful night like this, you would look in the sky and you could see all the star stellations, st- whatever they call that. Um, there we go. Right, shooting star, a small, rapid moving meteor burning up. Okay, so it's a meteor that is going through the atmosphere and then it starts burning up when it enters Earth's atmosphere. Um, so it, when it's small, right? So when it hits the atmosphere of Earth, it just burns up before it ever comes and hits the planet. You can see skies like this, it's just filled with stars, and, and you can see shooting stars crashing into the hemisphere it just depends where you are on the planet just like we've seen other pictures where if you're way up north and, and apparently i think it's the same if you're way down south at nighttime often you'll see the lights going through the sky and dancing and dancing in lines doing all kinds of amazing things and that's called the northern lights and it's the reflection of the sun that's on the other side of the planet hitting the Arctic Ocean and all that ice and glaciers that's millions of years old and the light reflecting into the sky. So on the dark side of the of the world, you can see in the dark night all the glimmering lights that are bouncing off the North Pole and the ice from the sun on the other side. Um, It's it's just remarkable. It's extraordinary. Extraordinary. Let's try that, Mimi Milo. Extraordinary. Yeah, we drop the A here. You see how the phonics, we go right to the or. No extraordinary. Extraordinary. Denary. Really good word. I like this word. Lily? Extraordinary. So no points there. We still have a 4-4 four, four tie. Uh-oh. With four words left. <laughs> what do you call these crazy trains? They go up mountains and hills, and you can sit normally, and it goes up. It's like going up like an escalator. What do we call these crazy types of trains? Special type of transportation that travels up and down steep slopes with a carriage being pulled. Slings? Slings? No. See, it looks like they're standing crooked, but no, they're actually standing straight and flat, but it's the machine that's angled that way. And they see them in many places. Apparently, there's quite a few of them in uh, in Barcelona. I don't know if these are the ones in Barcelona, but they're the only ones I could find on my on my Storyblocks license. I, I didn't know. If you would have asked me this word last week, I wouldn't know what they are. I would no, have no idea what they are. I just learned this myself, too. They're called funicular railways. Funicular. So it means going up and down slopes, right? And let's just, let's just do fun, fun, funicular. Let's, uh, let's type it in and let's see what the pronunciation is here, just to make sure. Because uh, I could be pronouncing it wrong. But I'm guessing fun, funic, funicular. Funic, funicular is my guess. Let's see. Funicular. Oh, no. Funicular. Funicular. I'm wrong. Sometimes I'm wrong. Not funicular. What is it again? (laughs) 
Funicular. Few. <laughs> like a like a EW. Funicular. U U U. Funicular. Lily. Funicular. Funicular railway. Yeah. See how the British say it. Funicular. 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 <laughs> I gotta work on my British accent. Hello, Perry. That little pair is running behind you there. What did she steal? Did she steal your candy? No. <laughs> Funicular. Rainwet. Did you ever see one of those before? No? Yes? Maybe? No. Me too. I've never seen one before either. First time. Three words left. This one's easy. It's not modern. Old-fashioned. Lily takes the lead. Five, four. Yeah, old-fashioned transportation. Look at that. I mean, this is in Europe somewhere, too, I'm sure, with those greeny buildings and the style. I don't, I don't know what kind of style that is, but the statues in the walls and the windows. Oh, my God. Helmies, Her Hermes, something, something. Somewhere in Europe. I don't know if this is Spain or not. And, of course, old-fashioned floppy disks. That's what we had when we were kids. We didn't have disks or USB or anything like that. Everything was on a floppy disk. <laughs> floppy, floppy. Yeah. And then, of course, the, the, the hippie-style clothes over there with the bell-bottom, the open-bottom jeans and everything. That was old-fashioned styles. Even before my time. These two are not too hard. This one should be easy. Of course, it's not a hotel. But what do you call a hotel? You have to have some mm before you go to another city or place or country. A place to live, passport? to work. To well, passport is what. A place to live, sleep, or stay. Where are you going to sleep? But all forms. Could be a train. Could be a bus. Could be a hotel. Could be a bed and breakfast. Could be a dormitory in a university. But that's the place you're going to call home for a while. Those are your what? Have you arranged any mm yet? Three, two, one. Really? You need to arrange your mm before you come to the city, before you travel, before you got to know where you're going to stay, right? Where you're going to sleep. Eating could be anywhere, but. You need to know one place. Where, where are you going to sleep? You need a place to put your stuff and have a bed to get your rest. They're called. How do we say that? Accommodation. Yeah, but it's not accommodation. It's like, see that phonic there? Modation. Accommodation. Accommodation. Lily, accommodation. Accommodation. Milo? Accommodation. Accommodation. All right. All right. So here we are. One word left. Mimi, Milo, you got to win this or Lily's going to win it. Now, there is something that I don't specifically know which cities it is more popular in or if it's popular everywhere, but it's definitely a very popular attraction in Spain. And the sport, I guess, the attraction, I don't know what you call it. I, 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 I hate to call it a sport. I'm not one to agree with this one at all, but I do know that it is part of their tradition, excuse me, tradition, culture for bullfighting. What do you call the man that does it? Anybody know what we call that guy? It is absolutely very popular in Spain and probably many parts of Spain. Uh, and I remember some people, uh, there was rumors and the government wanted to ban it. And there was a lot of protests. You cannot ban it. This is part of Spanish tradition. And there are many, many people that are very, very proud of it. And they, 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 they have it. Bullfighting. Okay. Last chance. What do you call the men who bullfight, who do the bullfighting? 
three, two, one. <laughs> Nobody got it. They are called matadors. There are some very famous matadors from Spain. I don't think any other country in the world does this, but yeah, like I said, very famous in Spain. That man there inside with the costume and everything and the, the red cape, the red cape blanket, don't know what it is, um, is a matador. That's what they call them, matadors. Okay, there we go. Lily, you won the first one. Come back because of that bonus point. <laughs> All right, let's go take a nice break. And we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll go through the words. And then we'll go through some reading comprehension. And then we'll go watch TV. <laughs> okay. See you in a little bit. Bye-bye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lily got Mimi gonna join us this time. Mimi, where are you hiding? Oh, it'd be difficult to hear her, her read any sentences. Oh, when is she gonna fix that microphone? I'm not looking forward to doing her test. It was so difficult to understand what she was saying. Oh, but I got to finish all the stars first. I got your sister done. Did you see your, did you see Paris's video? Yeah. Yeah. She did good for her first time. She'll be going to interest one in January. There's not much reading here today. Oh, yeah. No, what are we talking about? We're going to read about going to Barcelona. So let's go through a couple of these tougher words. Mimi Milo, make a sentence with realize. I realize that there are just 15 minutes for me to prepare for the next lesson. I realize that. Yeah, just uh, 15 minutes for There's just, just 15 minutes for me for you to prepare for the next lesson. To prepare something. Okay. Uh, flight, pretty easy. We're on a flight to Hawaii. Luggage, we have to check our luggage in. Get in a queue, write a sign, Barcelona, blah, 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 blah. Custom. Lily, what's a custom in Vietnam? Maybe you can custom your own character. Oh, customize. Okay, to create it yourself. Customize your own character. Okay. Coquette. Abroad, Lily. I'm Mimi Milo, I mean. My friends want to... Go abroad. Come to go abroad? What? My friend wants to go abroad. To go, not to come. <laughs> no. Yeah. Offshore, Lily. Yeah, I want to go abroad. Travel abroad. Offshore. What can you do offshore? Most people that are offshore, what are they doing? My, sorry, my internet is not good today. Oh. What do people normally do offshore? Mm, fishing. Well, it could be if they're going for a long time. Normally, people go fishing for the day and come back. But yeah, you're right. Some people, like I know some of the deep sea fishers, they'll, they'll stay on their boats. They'll go out fishing for like a week or two. But I wouldn't consider that offshore. I would say like the oil workers and stuff, right? Remember that was the example I gave, working offshore? Means you're going to be out there a long time, you know, probably a few months. 
I guess you could say, I, I, I can't think of a good sentence, but um, soldiers like on, on, in the Navy would go on long tours, but they call them tours. Yeah. When they go offshore or people that work in submarines, I guess they would be working offshore too. Let's see if we can get uh, offshore banking. Okay. This did adjective in different ways. An offshore breeze. We are all familiar with onshore breezes, that seaside on the warm day, but offshore breezes at night. Ah, come on. A number of offshore islands. So islands can be offshore, but they're islands. So of course, they're offshore. Can be seen from the beach. Sudden change in weather. Uh, they, they give a lot of st strange ones here. Offshore reef. Short distance offshore. Now, it can be used in many, many ways. Okay. Extraordinary. Mimi Mato. My, my partner can design me uh, extraordinary types of types of antibiotics. What can be extraordinary? My partner can design an extraordinary alphabet. Okay. Accommodations, Lily. I need a, I need an accommodation. <laughs> accommodation. Accommodation. In Paris. I need an accommodation. I need some accom. So I don't know why sometimes you make it plural. I need some accommodations. I need an accommodation. When we go to Europe. Yeah. Yeah. A place to stay. Where are you going to set yourself up? Matador. We already talked about it. Those are the, the guys who fight bulls. All right. So yeah, like I said, this was um, this was all based around Barcelona, Spain, with a little bit of facts of Spain in there as well. Um, so it was good, it was good, 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 and we got to do a little tour of places to visit if you ever go to Barcelona. What do you think? Do you think there's enough places there to take a holiday? Yeah. Mm, I would think so. Would you like to visit? Mimi Milo, take a trip to Spain and Barcelona? Yeah, I want to. Which place do you think you'd want to visit the most? We talked about so many things. Just the amazing architecture uh, to the amazing football field, the parks. Which one? I want to see the architecture. The architecture, yeah. I'm sure I could just spend hours walking around it, looking at how amazing it is and all the statue sculptures and oh my God. And I've seen pictures of the inside. It's like, huh, it's not from this earth. Which place would you like to visit, Lily? The, all the architecture too. Yeah, me too. Of all the places they talked about, the, the what interests me the most is going around the city and seeing all the incredible architecture, how old it is and how much work they've put into it. It's just extraordinary. <laughs> I guess we'll have to make extraordinary the word of the day today. An extraordinary place to study modern or uh, old architecture. and Absolutely. Maybe we can make a school trip. New way school trip with English with Trevor, and we'll all go to Barcelona for a week. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Woo! That, was, that will waste a lot of money. That would be a lot of money. It's funny. When I was in Indonesia, I started putting together a program. You know how even you guys have opportunities sometimes in the summer to go with a group of students with some teachers to like Singapore for a week or something in the summertime. Like some of the students, Coco and Jack and Matt of our other students, they, they went last or a couple of summers ago, I guess before COVID. Um, and they organized this. A couple of companies in Hanoi do this 
and the parents can pay X amount of whatever it costs. And you can go on a school trip to an English speaking part or another, you know, so, um, and they went to Australia. So I was putting together some of these programs um, to offer a summer program for families that could afford it. Cause it was expensive. It was like five or $6,000 for the kid to, I think it was like 10 days, nine or 10 days. And the packages we put together and offered was uh, one was to Hawaii which was rather close to Asia compared to North America. One was Western Canada on Vancouver Island. One was in Australia. Um, but then the kids would go with the teachers and we would go and tour and we had all these places to go. And what we, what we would do is we would rent, like rent a big villa or a house or a cottage. So we would all move into one big place and live there so we could every day we didn't have to stay spend money in hotels we just rented a house and then we bought all our food and we would barbecue and everything there and then of course on some days we'd go and try some of the local food and, and cafes and markets um and then we would do some of the tourist things around that area and uh that was the way it was all set up and of course it's 100 percent english immersion immersion and it's in a place where they don't speak Vietnamese or, <laughs> or Indonesian or anything like that. So you had no choice. Everywhere we would go, every, every um, activity we had every day, uh, you're always surrounded by Eng English-speaking people. So that was a really good program. I, I wish we would have continued working on that. Who knows? Maybe I'll try to put a program like that again together in the future. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, that's it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Well, no gentlemen tonight, just two ladies, yeah? So we will, uh, we will wrap up for this Saturday evening. And next week we will have... What are we talking about next week? Next week we're going to be talking about, talking about, talking about... Ah, it's going to be a lesson on geography. Different villages around the world. Well, that'll be interesting. Hmm. All right. Have a good weekend. See you later, alligators. Bye.